as surprising as it is, it's been just about 10 years since I graduated from high school, since I was sitting in your seats. So I thought about, you know, what's, what's, what's happened since then? What have I been up to for the last decade or so? And what's the most important thing that's happened to me? And I really believe that it's discovering my passion. And I'm an entrepreneur now, so what that ended up being was, you know, connecting great engineers to problems we're solving. But, you know, I really wondered, okay, so how did I, how did I really get there? And I really think there's one moment I wanted to tell you about, one moment that I think encapsulates the difference between having that passion, understanding it, and holding it in your hands, and not. So I'm going to tell you that story, and I hope you take something away from it. I'm also going to hope this clicker works. No? There we go. All right. So to be brutally honest, and that's kind of just the type of guy I am, my first job sucked. Uh, I did everything right, though. I was a high school valedictorian. I graduated early from college. I was actually the youngest program manager at Microsoft, and if not, maybe in its history. Um, I had a great job, good salary, cool title. I had everything that everyone else always wanted for me. Um, but it's funny that it really wasn't what I wanted for myself. You know, externally you're this, you got everything everyone wanted, but internally I spend most of my day on conference call making, you know, origami at my desk. That's not what was satisfying to me, and that's not what was going to make my life worth living. So I went on a search. I went on a little job odyssey or quest. And this is really where it landed me. And this is like landing me on a billboard in Times Square and presenting some really cool technology that I love. I ended up with this job that I didn't know existed called Technology Evangelist. Uh, I was the guy they'd put on stage to go talk about brand new technology and help people build and solve some of the world's hardest problems with bleeding edge technology. Um, and so what was the difference between these two? You know, what was the difference between sitting at my desk, being bored on a conference call, and having the job that was really beyond my wildest dreams and expectations. And I think it just boiled down to really, you know, three simple steps. You know, I had that one epiphany where I was thinking, okay, I'm not happy. I'm going to live for myself. I'm going to be selfish and I'm going to choose what's best for me. I'm going to kind of ignore all these external pressures of what my peers want, what my parents want, what, what's in the news even. And I'm going to figure out, what am I really good at? And what do I really enjoy doing? And then I spent the next months talking to people to figure out you know, which one of these roles, or what job, or what jobs out there match those two things. You know, what's the intersection of my abilities and my interests? And I ended up discovering this role that I didn't know existed. And I think that's a very important exercise. Um, and then finally, I made this leap. You know, I took a job that I didn't know existed. I moved across the country to Washington, D.C., a place I'd actually never been before, never even been to the East Coast, uh, to do something I didn't even know was possible. And I think that really, that was the moment. You know, making that leap, that transformed my life. And so when I think back to, you know, high school Psy, all the way back 10 years ago, you know, why didn't I do it then? Because I think to each of these steps, there's a trick, actually. And I'm an engineer, so we like little tricks. Um, so I'm going to share with you the three tricks that I think I picked up along the way that let me make those three important steps. So here's the first. You know, that money really doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter, but not as much as people might think. There's this great Princeton study that finds that happiness kind of levels off at about $75,000 a year. Pretty much any task or any job or any career will land you there. So don't worry about it. You know, I think back to when I was in college or when I was in high school, and I really lacked direction. So I just choose the most, you know, I had immigrant parents worked really hard, and the natural step is to choose the most stable, safe job. And so I did. And that really kind of slowed down the progression of me finding my passion. It's kind of like a little distraction, a little false road to walk down for five or ten years until you really wake up and you realize that there's more to life. So, you know, I really would encourage you to take that step, you know, have that really honest conversation and figure out what you want as early as possible because the earlier you figure it out, the longer you're able to walk your road 
the further along you'll be and the higher you'll fly in your career and your profession of choice. The second is talking to people. You know, I think back to when I was in high school, and you're making a really big decision. Going to college, I mean, you're dedicating four years of your life, potentially a quarter million dollars, which would take you about 10 years to earn. So it's a decade and a half of investment you're getting ready to make right now. Um, and I think people spend far, far less time figuring out where to make that investment and what to do with it. And also, they talk to the same people over and over again. They form very strong opinions by having them reinforced by very homogenous people over and over again. It's important to reach out, to really expand your vision so you recognize the true breadth and the true depth of the world and the opportunities that are really at your feet right now so you can choose what the right one is for you to invest in. And also, you have a special status as a student. And people don't really realize this, and I didn't even realize this until even grad school. Everyone will take your calls. Anyone will take your calls. It is absolutely amazing what emailing people as a student will get you. So really treat that world as open to you. Everybody's door is open to you. You've got to get out there and just you know, start knocking on a couple to figure out what it is and learn what the, what the right job fit for you is, as well as what the downsides are. Every job has a downside, right? I'm an entrepreneur right now. The downside is we can potentially invest 10 years of my life and have nothing to show for it. That's a very real risk we take, and you got to be happy with it. You know, for me, the ability to build and create and enjoy that process totally makes the downside worthwhile. But you want to go out and understand before you become career X. I'll pick on doctors because at my undergrad, 80% of the students of, out of 40,000 were pre-med. All want to be doctors. I don't think they understood the upsides or the downsides. So I'd say that's absolutely critical. And the third is simply just to take that risk. You know, I like this picture a lot. Not only because it's just this boundless ambition, but because you think about what happens if he doesn't make it. He falls back into the first bowl. There's not a lot of loss here. And I think, especially for the people in this room, there's not, you don't have almost anything to lose by trying. And there's this great Forbes article where it said that unhappy workers outnumber happy ones two to one. And that's terrible. You know, I think that is something worth being very, very afraid of. So take the leap. And I want to borrow some wisdom from, uh, you know, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. And it's, it's a great quote on this. And it is, you know, I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something. But I can't accept not trying. You know, those for me are really words to live by. I want to be that fish. And my talk's going to be really short, so this is the end of it. And I just want to ask you all to start with just two things, you know, those two things. Make that choice right now to live for yourself. Make that choice to have that honest conversation and understand who you want to be, who you are, and where you need to be going. Really shut out everything else around you. Make it your choice. And then go talk to people to figure out where you fit into this world. You know, you need to expand your vision, figure out what piece of the puzzle you are. Do not wait, like I did, till you're already in your career to ask yourself those questions. That is far too late. I'm lucky I did, but if I had, if I known what I know now, I would have started as early as possible to find my passion. You know, I just ask that you be just aggressive and absolutely courageous in finding your passion because I think that is the most important thing you will do with your life. Thank you.